Okay, so let's jump right in. In its simplest form, what we want to be able to do is read keys pressed on the keyboard and play sounds whenever this happens. But we want to be able to capture all key presses no matter where we type them. So the first thing that we need to do is identify which event file is the one for our keyboard. So to do that, I'm just going to start by opening up a terminal and I'm going to ls slash dev slash input slash by dash id and hit enter. And you can see we get this listing of a couple of files. Now, if you have a look at the first one, the end of it ends in kbd. So I'm guessing this is probably related to my keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run file on that file. So file slash dev slash input slash by dash ID slash USB and then the rest of the file name and that is event dash KBD and hit enter. And as you can see, it's a symbolic link to the directory above and the event file is event 15. So let's confirm that that is the keyboard file. So I'll just sudo cat slash dev slash input slash event 15 and hit enter and then just enter in my password. And I'm just going to open up another terminal and I'll just press the letter A. Now, as you see in the terminal that we're catting the event file in, there was a change. So let's just hit A again and again and again. So you can see that every single time I hit a key, we get some output from that event file. So I'm just going to control C that right now. So I'm pretty sure right now that that is the correct event file for my keyboard. But as you can see from the output, we're going to have to read this file in some kind of special way. So as this is related to input, we can check the kernel.org documentation about input. So I'm just going to open that up in a web browser. Okay, so this is the information that we need. And if you scroll all the way down to the end of this page, and don't worry, I'll drop all of the links in the description below. What we actually need to know is this part here. So it says you can use blocking and non-blocking reads. Also select on the dev on the slash dev slash input slash event devices. And you'll always get a whole number of input events on a read. And then it goes on to describe the layout of each event. So each event is a struct and a struct is just a data structure. So don't worry too much about what that is. But the first member of it is another struct, which is time. And that's of type time val. And the second member is type, which is an unsigned short. And the third member is code, which is an unsigned short again. And the last member is value, which is an unsigned int. I also did a quick search for how this is structured. And I found this link over here. So I'm guessing this is correct. So if we just have a quick read of this. So the struct time val structure represents an elapsed time. And it says it's declared in sys slash time dot h and has the following members. So the first member is time underscore t. And I'm guessing tv stands for time value. So time value underscore seconds. And this represents the number of whole seconds of elapsed time. So that's probably an epoch time, I'm guessing. And the second member is a long int which is time value underscore usec, which is probably microseconds. And yes, it is. So this is the rest of the elapsed time, a fraction of a second represented as a number of microseconds. And it says it's always less than one million. So I'm going to assume that this time underscore t is again another long int. So I think we've got all the information that we need to start writing something that will actually do what we need it to do. So the next step is to actually write a small Python script that will be able to interpret each of these keyboard events. OK, so let's start writing this script. So I'm just going to use vim and let's call the script display keys dot py. OK, so the first line is going to be a shebang slash USR slash bin slash env python. And there's going to be a couple of imports. So I need to import struct because I'm going to use that. And let's import sys as well. OK, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called infile underscore path. And that's going to equal a string, which is slash dev slash input slash event and I'm not going to put the number on here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some user input into that so we're going to use the sys module so sys.argv and just put square brackets in a one so that's element one of the argv list 
and we're going to create an if statement within this. So if the length, so if len of sys dot arg v is greater than one, else zero. So all this is doing is it's checking if there is user arguments supplied to this script. And if they exist, use those. If they don't, just default to zero. So I'm going to print out in file just to show you what this does. So print in file underscore path. And let's just close that. And let's run this with Python. So Python display keys and hit enter. And as you can see, it printed out the path. So it's slash dev slash input slash event zero. Now, if I provide a number, say event 15, which is my keyboard event file, it's going to create the path slash dev slash input slash event 15, which is what we want. So let's just go back to editing this now. So display. And I'm just going to delete that. So let's carry on writing this script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another string. Well, another variable for a string called format. And that's going to equal a string. And within that string, I'm going to put an L, an L, a capital H, well, two of them, and a capital I. So this will kind of make sense later, but that's kind of what we need for now. And then I'm going to create another variable called event underscore size. And that's going to equal struct dot calc size. And we're going to throw our format string within that. So what this is going to do is it's going to take our format string and it's going to go through it one character at a time. So these characters actually mean something. So an L, a lowercase L stands for a long, an uppercase H stands for an unsigned short, and an uppercase I stands for an unsigned int. So struct.calc size is going to take this string and calculate the total number of bytes for me. So I'm going to print that out. So print event underscore size. And let's just save that and run it so you can see what that's going to do. So display keys. So that's given us the number 24. So the number that you get may be different depending on your system architecture, but it doesn't matter if it's different. It should all work out fine. So let's just go back to this script and I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is create a file handle. So I'm going to call that in underscore file. And that's going to equal open. So we're going to open a file and the file that we're going to open, we need to first provide the path to the file. So we're going to use our in file underscore path variable that we created earlier, put in a comma and a string. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say we need to read from this file, but we want to read from it in binary mode. So we put RB. So all this line is doing is it's creating a file handle for us and we're saying, OK, we're going to open this file and we're going to open it so that we can read it. But we want to read it in a specific way, which is binary mode. And now we're going to create our event variable. So we'll just call it event. And that's going to equal our in underscore file dot read. And we're going to throw our event size in here. So event underscore size. So what this line is doing is we're actually reading the file now, but we're reading it 24 bytes at a time. And that creates our event. So we're just kicking this off with our first event. So now we're going to create a while loop because we want to continuously read from this file. So while we have an event, we're going to do some stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to unpack that event. So we're going to use a struct method called unpack. So first we need to create a tuple and we're going to create our variables in here. So the first one was one of the time variables. So we'll call that TV underscore sec. So that's the time in seconds. And then we need the microseconds part of the time struct. So TV underscore u sec, another comma. And then we have our third variable, which was type. So I'm going to just call that key type. And then we have code and then value. OK, so that's going to equal. So we're going to assign some variables to these names. So struct dot unpack. And we need to provide our format. So format, which is our format variable. So that's kind of like the blueprint for how to unpack this event. And then we need to provide the actual event. So we'll just throw in event here. And to keep this loop running, we need to grab another event. So we're going to grab that here. So event is going to equal in underscore file dot read. 
and the event size. So event underscore size. So what we're doing is we are reading from our keyboard event file continuously and we're reading it 24 bytes at a time. So in 24 byte chunks. Okay, so there's one more thing that we need to do before we actually try and run this. And that is throw in a print statement so that we can actually see these variables. So I'm gonna print and I'm gonna create a format string. So let's start with, I don't know, the event type. So event type colon and then just throw in a couple of curly braces and let's put a comma after that and then let's say the next thing would be I don't know code and we'll throw in another set of curly braces let's just put a semicolon in there and let's throw a comma after that and then value and again another set of curly braces and then let's do the time stuff so let's do I don't think we really need time in microseconds, so let's just use the time in seconds. So we'll just call that time and throw in some curly braces. Just put a semicolon in there. And then we're going to format that. So dot format and some parentheses. So the first one was type and we called it key type. So we need to throw a key type in there, comma. Second one was code. We just called it code, comma, uh, the value. And that was just value. And then the last one is time in seconds. We just called it time there. So that was TV underscore sec. Okay, so all this is doing with these curly braces is these are being mapped to each one of these in order. So this is our variable key type, which is this variable that we assigned up here when we unpacked our event. And that's gonna be thrown in here when we print this to our terminal. And the same goes for code which will be thrown in here, the actual value for the code and value and time, it's exactly the same. So I think we're good to go. So I'm just gonna save this and let's just try and run this. So because we're reading from a system file, we actually need to be root to do this. So we need to use sudo and we'll just use Python display pi keys and then enter in my password. And there we go, nothing's happening yet. So let's just hit a key on the keyboard, so A and nothing happened. And the reason why nothing happened is because it's reading from event file zero. So I'm gonna stop that and add 15 because I need to remember to pass that in. That is my event file. So let's just try that again. And we got some output straight away. So if I hit A, we get some output. S, more output. Okay, so let's have a look at these values that we're getting. The ones that are kind of standing out to me are these zero values where the type, code, and value are all zero. So I think this is kind of hard to read. So let's try and clear this up and let's print something else when we get zero. So I'm just gonna stop this and let's go back into Vim. So to make this easier to read, I think those zero values are some kind of event separator. So I'm gonna treat them as such and I'll throw in an if statement here. So let's just put it in here. So let's just hit enter on that. So what I'm gonna do is if the type, so we called it key type. So if key type is not equal to zero or code is not equal to zero, then print our statement. So I'll just bring that back up. There we go. And then I need to pair that with an else. So else, so if we do have those zero value events, then let's just print out something else. So I don't know, let's just print out a whole load of equal signs just to separate it. Okay, so let's save this now and have another look. So I'll just clear the screen and run the same command again. Okay, so that looks a lot cleaner now. So let's press A again. Okay, so let's press A again and let's try S. Okay, so if you look at the code, the code actually changed. So let's see if that's repeatable. So let's press A. A is 30 and S seems to be 31. And then the value seems to toggle from one to zero. So I think the value probably corresponds to us pressing the key down and that's value one. And then releasing the key is another event and that's value zero. So what happens if we hold the key down? So I'm gonna hold down A. So the code is the same, but the value is two. So I think two 
means that the key is being held down and one is just being pressed, zero is being released. Okay, so I think we've got enough to work with now. So we can actually detect which keys are being pressed. Let's press some others. So S is 31, I'm guessing D is 32. Yeah, and then F is probably 33. Yeah, 34. Okay, so I think that we have enough information now to actually write something that will play some audio files every time we hit a key. And we've already written most of the code that will allow us to do this. So we just need to add a few bits to what we've already written. So I'm just gonna control C this to stop that from running. And I'll just clear the screen. And let's start adapting this script to actually play some audio. Okay, so let's start off by making a copy of what we've previously done. So I'm gonna copy uh, display keys to typewriter. .py and hit enter. So now we have a copy of our file so we can just work on our copy. And what I've also done is I've downloaded a couple of audio files. So one of them is called key sound. So I'll just play that now. And it's just a really short audio clip of a key being hit. And then I've got ding three. So let's just play that. So it just dings. Okay, so I've got two audio files. Now we need something to actually play the audio. So to do that, I'm gonna use Pygame uh, purely because it's just simple. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is just sudo apt-get install python-pygame and just hit enter. And as you can see, I already have it installed. Now to check if you actually have it installed after you attempt to install it, just open up Python, well, a Python interpreter and try and import Pygame. Now, if you don't get any errors, like I haven't now, then Pygame is installed successfully. And to exit this, just hold control and press D. So I'm just gonna clear that. So let's start modifying our new typewriter.py file to actually play sounds when keys are hit. So I'm just gonna open that up. So vim typewriter.py, and I'll just make that full screen. And I'm just gonna start off by importing Pygame. So import Pygame. And let's just set up the sound first. So in Pygame, you need to first initialize the mixer. So to do that, you just type in pygame.mixer.init. So we're just calling the init method. And then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna load in our audio files. So let's first do the key sound audio file and let's give it a name. So let's call it keystroke, maybe keystroke. And that equals pygame.mixer.sound with a capital S and then open up parentheses. And within this, what we need to do is put the path to the sound. So as this script is on my desktop and the sound is on my desktop, I'm not gonna bother with a full path. So it was called key sound. Dot wav. And we have to do the same for the other sound. So let's just call it, I don't know, ding. And that equals the exact same. So pygame.mixer.sound with a capital S. Open up your parentheses. And it was called ding3.wav. So that's our sounds loaded. And that's the mixer initialized. So all we need to do is play those sounds when a key is hit. So let's just come down to where we're actually reading the events. And let's add another if statement in here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually just going to delete this print statement and throw my if statement directly within this other if statement. So, so what would actually be helpful now is to have a small application that will tell us what the key codes actually are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up another terminal and cd that over to my desktop. And I'm just gonna run the script that we previously wrote. So that was, so that was called display keys. And I want to read event file 15, so just don't forget that and enter in my password. Okay, so the A key is code 30 and let's see what the enter key is. So enter is code 28. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now then is I'm not gonna bother closing that, but I'm gonna say if code 
is equal to 28. So if the key is the return key or the enter key and the value is equal to one. So if the key is being pressed, then let's play the ding sound. So ding dot play. So we're calling the play method on our ding object. So that will trigger it to play. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another conditional statement. So else if, so elif value is equal to one, then just play our other sound, which was keystroke dot play. So what's happening here is if we hit the enter key, it will play our ding sound. But if we hit any other key, it's just going to play our keystroke sound. Now, what I could also do is clean this up even further. So I can remove this if statement up here. So let's just get rid of that. And we don't need the else statement down here and we don't need that print statement. But I need to then just yank all of this back a little bit. So I'll just highlight this and I'll move it back. So it's not going to print anything out anymore. All it's going to do is play sounds. So let's test this out and see if it works. So we need sudo. So sudo and Python type writer. And we want to read event file 15 and hit enter. And we've got an error. So, okay, name error. All right. So I misspelled pie game somewhere. Okay, right up here. Uh, okay. So that should fix that. And let's try that again. So let's just start typing something and hopefully we should get some sound out. And that seems to work. Okay, so that all seems to work fine. Let's try and not type in the terminal. So I don't know, let's actually, let's just shut this one down. So close that and we can get rid of that. Let's open up, um, actually, let's just click on the desktop and just start typing. So seems to work great. Okay, so that seems to work. So Let's just stop that for now and go back into this file and just have a quick look at some stuff. So we can use the previous script that we wrote to actually work out which key codes correspond to which keys on our keyboard. So what we could then do is we could have any key play any sound we want whenever we hit it. So you're not limited to loading only two sounds. You can load as many as you want and you could have every single key on your keyboard play a totally different sound every time you press it. You could also possibly use this for some kind of soundboard usage or something like that. But yeah, so that's the basics of how to actually read directly from a keyboard event file. And everything seemed to work out great. So that's the kind of most basic version. Okay, so that's brought us to the end of this tutorial on how to make your keyboard sound like a typewriter. And I hope you found something in this tutorial useful. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.